Most people live their life in a habit. They think the same thoughts, they perform the same actions, they live by the same emotions, but they secretly expect their life to change. But how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. So if you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, the same thoughts always lead to the same choices. The same choices always lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the same experiences, and the same experiences produce the same emotions. And those same emotions then drive your very same thoughts. So then, the hardest part about change, really, in creating the life that you want, being defined by a vision of the future instead of a memory of the past, is not making the same choice as you did the day before. Mm. And the moment you do that, you step into the unknown. Mm. Now, you and I have been conditioned and hypnotized into believing that the unknown is some scary place. Mm. But when you begin to realize the unknown is the perfect place to create from, mm. that void of unpredictability, that uncertainty, that unfamiliarity, so when you and I become comfortable living in that unknown place, I think then that we begin to manifest the things we want in our lives. So if you're talking about manifesting your dreams, well, it only requires two things. It requires a clear intention. An intention is a vision, a possibility. The moment you say, what would it be like to be healthy? What would it be like to be wealthy? What would it be like to have a new home? What would it be like to have a great job? and you get this idea in your mind, that's intention. Then you write down the details. Okay, I wanna travel around the world. I wanna have great benefits, great insurance. I wanna work with really cool people. I wanna have a chance to be creative. And you list all of those individual elements to fortify your dream. The more you get clear on those details, the more your brain begins to work in new ways. Anytime you make your brain work differently, you're changing your mind. Now. The moment you get inspired and you begin to feel what it would be like to live in that future, your body is getting a chemical sampling, an emotional sampling. It's getting a taste of the future. It has to then open your heart. You have to move into an elevated state. This place, the heart center, is the center of creation. So for me personally, I want to execute and be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past. So most people's brains are organized to reflect everything they know in their life. Their brain is a record of the past. Mm. And if you feel the same way every single day, mm. and feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences, it means, number one, nothing new is happening in your life. And number two, those emotions are keeping you anchored to the past. If thoughts are the language of the brain, and feelings are the language of the body, and how you think and how you feel creates a state of being, most people are literally connected to a past. So then the question is, the fundamental question is, can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain has literally changed to look like the experience has already occurred? And can we begin to emotionally embrace a future reality and begin to emotionally embrace it to such a degree that we fall in love with that future reality, that our body as our unconscious mind begins to believe it's living in that future reality in the present moment, and we're signaling new genes and new ways to change our body to look like the experience has already occurred in preparation for the event. You have to then understand that when you truly do this properly, you're not waiting for your healing to feel whole. You're not waiting for your success to feel empowered. You're not waiting for your wealth to feel abundant. You're not waiting for your new relationship to feel love. You're not waiting for the mystical moment to feel awe. That's the old model of reality, of cause and effect, waiting for something outside of you to change how you feel inside of you. And when you feel better inside, then you pay attention to whoever, whatever caused that. That's, that's cause and effect. 
you have to teach your body emotionally how that future is going to feel like before it's made manifest. In other words, you have to feel awe in order for the mystical moment to happen. You have to feel a, a abundance before your wealth can occur. You have to feel in love with life before your new relationship happens. Mm. And so we're not defining reality by our senses because we're not waiting then for, for anything outside of us to change how we feel inside of us. So if there's physical evidence in your brain and body to look like the experience has already occurred, well, relax because the experience is going to find you and it's going to come in a way that you least expect the challenge is then to every day be defined by a vision of the future so then when you combine a clear intention that's a thoughtful process with an elevated emotion a heartfelt state of being thoughts are the language of the brain feelings are the language of the body when you truly do that your brain and body are living in the future instead of living in the past and you're going to be drawn to some new event. It's going to take time to pull your brain and body out of the past and continuously invest your energy into the future. So can you then maintain that vision, that view of your future, independent of the conditions in your environment? independent of the emotional addictions or conditionings or habits of the body and independent of time because if you can that's what greatness is all about that's when we begin to truly change and people around the world are doing this consistently and they're doing it really well because it's our natural innate uh, way of being it requires consistent consistent action why because meditation the actual translation of the word meditation means to become familiar with so the first thing you have to do is you have to become conscious of your unconscious thoughts you got to notice your automatic habits and behaviors and you have to become aware of your emotions that keep you anchored to the past and if you can become so conscious of the one unconscious states of mind and body that they would never slip by your conscious awareness again you're becoming familiar with the old self so you don't return then if you begin to think about new ways of being being defined by a vision plan your behaviors review them in your mind now if you keep doing that over and over again you begin to become familiar with a new state of mind at the same time if you can emotionally cultivate your inspiration your joy your enthusiasm ahead of the experience by repeating that over and over again cultivating that state it's going to begin to become familiar to you so then the process of change then requires unlearning and relearning breaking the habit of the old self reinventing a new self unmemorizing emotions that are stored in the body then here's the key reconditioning the body to a new mind and to a new emotion it's literally moving from your past to your future it's losing your mind and creating a new one and so then when you begin to understand that in the in that process it's going to feel a little bit unfamiliar uh, uncomfortable and if you can relax into that instead of going back to the past continuously invest in your future sooner or later it'll begin to become easier and easier and easier and all of a sudden when you least expect it something amazing is going to happen in your life and when that event begins to occur you're going to pay attention to what you did inside of you now to produce the effect outside of you and that's called human empowerment and there isn't a person in the world that's excluded from this equation there's never a time that the mind is influencing the body and there isn't a time when the body is influencing the mind there that we are always in the state of being so then if you're living by the same thoughts behaviors and emotions every single day then your biology is going to stay exactly the same so then the question is if you can begin to then change the way you think change the way you act and change the way you feel every single day and be consistent with it and not return back to the old mechanisms in time then you'll see a steady gradual change